transverberation. The August 5, 1918 while confessing the young scholastics of his convent, Padre Pio's displays symptoms or signs referring to transverberation, his heart is pierced by a spiritual sting with real bleeding. According to tradition, his complete stigma takes place on September 20, 1918, the stigmata, wounds of Christ bloody hands, feet, and chest as the five wounds of Christ, he tries to hide with mittens. He gives the following testimony of events. I saw before me a mysterious person whose hands, feet, chest, were streaming with blood. I felt my heart hurt by a sting of fire. This character disappeared from my sight and I noticed that my hands, my feet, my chest were pierced and dripping with blood. His description of his own mystical transport largely similar to what was written Gemma Galgani. In the early days Padre Pio seeks to hide the wounds, but women who follow his spiritual direction see the wounds and noisy the new way. Similarly, the young people to whom he lavishes his teaching also perceive scars on the hands of Padre Pio's. On May 9, 1919, the first newspaper IL journal Detalia speaks of miracles of Padre Pio's. On May 25, 1919, a local magazine published the news entitled The Saint of San Giovanni Rotondo. In June 1919, three newspapers including IL Matino, main newspaper of Naples, show the information by talking of miracles that operates the thaumaturge Padre Pios. The notoriety, unwanted by Padre Pio and even less by his superiors who had imposed any discretion on the brothers of the convent, helps to bring more and more people to the monastery. The first medical interpretations are around the case of Padre Pio, whose professor Enrico Marica, who has not seen Padre Pio's, interprets the miracles of Padre Pio's as animal magnetism from dangerous morbid phenomena of collective psychology. Faced with the new events, the superior of the Capuchins and the Holy Office decide to have Padre Pio's examined in order to know the natural or supernatural origin of the alleged stigmata note. Emerging theories about hysteria and the school of idioplasty are then put forward by skeptics to deny the supernatural character of stigmata. More than three doctors will examine the wounds of Padre Pios, Dr. Luigi Romanelli, head of the Barletta Hospital, Dr. Angelo Maria Merla, mayor of the municipality, socialist, and agnostic. Exams lead to the removal of self-injury and come to the conclusion that the fact constitutes in itself a phenomenon that is not capable of explaining the only human science. On July 12 and 13, 1919, the Holy Office sent Professor Amico Bignami, a positivist who, in turn, examined Padre Pius. Very skeptical, the conclusions he gives are different from the other two doctors. Even if he finds that Padre Pio's wounds have characteristics that cannot be explained from the knowledge we have about neurotic necrosis, and the perfectly symmetrical localization of the lesions described, and their persistence without any significant change. According to the patient, he concludes with the possibility that the wounds are partly the result of a morbid condition, partly artificial. The suspicions of fraud is such that the Holy Office held Padre Pios for a circus freak that would benefit his Capuchin brothers, through a public credulity to attract pilgrims and raise considerable funds. In addition to the supposed financial malpractices of which the Capuchins are suspected, Padre Pios is accused of being the ally of the fascists whom he blesses whereas the clashes between communists, socialists, and fascists during the municipal elections in San Giovanni Rotondo the October 14, 1920 caused the death of 11 Reds by a proto-fascist commando. As a result of these events, the local fascist leader Giuseppe Caradona supports Padre Pios and the editions of his party publish the first works on the saint. The Holy Office Sometimes considering the stigmatized living saints as real charlatans, these superstitions can turn against the faith, publicizes his theological mistrust, May 31, 1923, he issued a decree exhorting the faithful not to believe the facts supernatural related to the life of Padre Pios and not to go to San Giovanni Rotondo, July 5, 1923, the Acta Apostolici Sedis right current evidence does not prove that the stigmata, the alleged Bilocatian can be held for sure for. 
miraculous and el Servitor Romano declared Padre Pio's imposter bad faith. Investigation by the Holy Office and withdrawal from public life. From 1924 to 1928, three apostolic visitors will come to investigate Padre Pius. Some physicians and psychiatrists examine it, fearing hysterical demonstrations. Yet it is declared healthy and sincere. It is therefore very critical, not because of her condition, but because of the excesses of the faithful, he is also accused by his superiors that sees its popularity a threat and adrift, and requires May 23, 1931 cease all public activities, to now celebrate the Mass in the inner chapel of the convent. Testimonies persist, however, concerning supernatural phenomena, in particular unusual fragrances projected at a distance, in addition to the odor of holiness which usually accompanied it, it has frequently happened that people, have felt this mysterious scent, at enormous distances from the convent where Padre Pios was. Often in confessions he himself reminded the penitents of faults they had forgotten. Throughout his life, he would have suffered almost daily the physical and moral attacks of Satan whose Cossacks, as he called them, would have come nightly to hit him, making so much noise in the monastery that some monks, terrified, would have asked their mutation. From that time, Padre Pios is considered by popular devotion as a great saint miracle worker of the century, having accomplished a multitude of instant healing miracles in the presence of many witnesses. It is also given the gift of Bilokatayan, simultaneous appearance in two places, in addition to particular phenomena such as hyperthermia, very high temperature of the body, beyond 48 degrees, or unedited, prolonged food abstention, or drink beyond two months, or the knowledge of foreign languages. The levitation, although relayed by rumor, receives only the testimony of Padre himself. Padre Pio's friends try therefore to lift the ban of the holy office denouncing his slanderers and corrupt clerics. Thus his friend Emmanuel Brunato threatens the holy office to publish the Antichrists in the Church of Christ implicating these clergymen, threat that he puts into execution in 1933. Then he builds the archetypes of the sanctity of Padre Pio in different works. He moved to France in 1931. While multiplying the donations to the most deprived and the charitable works, in particular creation of the hot drink, a soup kitchen, it is enriched enough to finance the Casa Salivo della Sofferenza, from 1941. Suspected of having been enriched by the black market during the occupation, Brunato will be sentenced to death in absentia in 1948 before being wholly cleared by a new trial in 1951. Lifting of the Ban of the Holy Office The July 14, 1933 He Holy Office again authorizes Padre Pio to celebrate public masses and hear confessions. The January 10, 1940, he sketches the plans for a Casa Salivo della Sofferenza House to relieve suffering. The hospital opened in 1944, but the official inauguration took place only on May 5, 1956. At the same time, Padre Pios founded prayer groups to heal and relieve souls. As early as 1947, measures were again taken in San Giovanni Rotondo following the visit of the General Father of the Capuchin Order, who noted a certain liturgical disorder because of the excessive piety of some faithful. In 1947, the young father Carol Wojtyla visited him. From the 1950s an immense financial scandal shook the Italian Catholic world. Funds were diverted to personal profit and others were placed at a loss in the tricks of the banker Jufri. The Capuchins, like many others, are bankrupt. Padre Pios is not personally implicated in this affair and even he is relieved of his vows of poverty, in order to have complete freedom to manage the funds of his faithful for Casa Salivo della Sofferenza. He then had to undergo many bullying and persecutions of his peers who tried to appropriate his treasure. In April 1960, Pope John XXIII taught as microphones were installed around the stigmatized in the convent and in his confessional. The pontiff ordered a more thorough investigation of Padre Pio's, sending messenger. Carlo Macari, head of the second office of the Vicariate of Rome. From July 30 to October 2, 1960, 
the apostolic visitor examines the problems and finds excessive devotion bringing an object touching trade Padre Pios, such as pieces of fabric allegedly soaked with the blood of stigmas. Following this visit, the Holy Office undertakes to limit the public appearances of Padre Pios, who has gained renown as a laborer. Miracles, working up to 19 hours a day in his church. In November 1961, the superior of the order request to Padre Pios to restore the faithful funds to bail out, which he did. In 1962, the Archbishop of Krakow, M.G.R. Karol Wojtyla, the future Pope John Paul II wrote a letter in Latin to Padre Pios asking him to pray for a mother of four children reached of cancer, Wanda Pol Tosca. Padre Pios replied that he could not refuse, four days later, Wanda Pol Tosca is healed. It is only at the express request of Pope Paul VI that he is again fully authorized to carry out his office without restriction, from January 30, 1964. The July 7, 1968, Padre Pios is the victim of an attack. The September 22, 1968, he celebrates the solemn mass of the 50th anniversary of his stigmata which he expresses as follows. 50 years of religious life, 50 years nailed to the cross, 50 years of devouring fire for you, Lord, for the beings you have redeemed. The same evening he receives extreme unction and goes out a few hours later, at 2.30 in the morning of September 23, 1968. Thanks for watching, share, comment, and subscribe. Saint Padre Pios pray for 